Those the mysterious scorpions. Let's talk about you a little bit. So Scorpio, first of all, I call it the still water. Scorpio, we talked about cancer as the moving water. The next water sign is still water. As you say, still waters run deep is very true to the scorpions. Let's see the esoteric aspects first. The esoteric meaning of Scorpio is discipleship that is demonstrated through the transformation of shadow. That itself it gives a very, very strong message of the life purpose of a Scorpio is to transformation of shadow. Keynote for the soul, warrior I am and through the battle I emerge triumph. So this one is something of a spiritual warrior. There's a warrior mentality because Scorpio is ruled by Mars and yet it is a water sign. So it's a very karmic sign. Everything from number seven, Libra, the previous one we did, right up till Pisces is all going out and the energy is going into the outer world. So it's, they are all very karmic signs, right from Libra. So, soul ray is the fourth one. The will to relate and harmonize, transmute the shadow through battle. So it's a tough fight for the scorpions because they need to transmute their shadow. It's a still water, so it has to go within. Everything has to go within to the scorpion. It's secretive, it's hidden, it's underneath. It's un at the bottom of the lake. Soul mantra fourth, two merge into one. So colors being fourth, yellow. Vedic aspects, it's Thomas, it's fixed, it's female. There itself should give you the hint of the energies of Scorpio, isn't it? It's Tamas meaning it has earthly, it needs to be translated to real terms, earthly terms. It's fixed, it's unmoving, fixed, still water, get the energy of that. And it's female sign, means it's introverted. It, female sign because it's Tamas and fixed and female, it wants to actualize into physical aspects. Sign Lord is Mars and Ketu. That's why it becomes a karmic sign. Ketu being the south node of the moon. Wherever Ketu is, it creates dissolution. It creates detachment. So these people have a contradiction of duality between um, attachment and detachment. Because opposite of Scorpio is Taurus, which is very early. Where moon and Rahu are exalted and Ketu is debilitated. Here Ketu rules, Mars Ketu rules. So, uh, sign lord is that. Exaltation is Ketu, debilitation is moon Rahu because these people are not interested in materialistic life. They want to go to the deeper meaning of esoteric spirituality and it will go with the Martian attitude, it will go with the aggression of a Mars. So this becomes a really mysterious sign because Mars is an outward going energy whereas here it is feminine and wants to go internal and discover the deep hidden secrets of existence. So that's why it's a, this 8th house of Scorpio which is now landed in the head is of a type moksha. Why? Because you go deep within any matter it liberates you from the aspects of that. Let's go to the main chart now, our famous chart, and see what the scorpions are about. So now we have in the 8th house, is stuck in your head. When the 8th house comes into your head, you are bringing the Martian energy first, which is aggressive, it's fierce, it wants to penetrate all aspects and discover things for itself. But here in the 8th house, being a still water, K2 is exalted, meaning it's more of dissolution. The ascendant will feel no sense of self or the self dissolved in the world. And, and Moon and Rahu are debilitated here. That means there's no sense of materialism. So scorpions are very, in their being, in their head, they have less sense of self and more sense of renunciate. A monk, by nature a monk. And then 9th carries to the 2nd house, 10th to the 3rd house, 11th to the 4th, 12th, etc, etc. Let's examine how this plays out because Mars being in the 1st also will carry the energy to the 6th house where Aries is present. That's also ruled by Mars. That's why these people have very fierce enemies. Fierce enemies who they will conquer through aggression. That's why it's called a warrior energy. 
because they bring the psychic element of Mars into the practical daily work element of Mars, a house of enemies. So this is a spiritual warrior sign which they come to, right? So let's see how it plays out. Scorpio, Mars as Scorpio in the ascendant will give person very secretive, wanting domination to win at all costs. Remember we saw this this Mars, looking at this house, they want to win at all costs. They can get into physical fights in childhood, can be abusive to themselves. Why? Because there is no sense of self. You go to this chart over here so that we get a better understanding. There is no sense of self. K2 is exalted. So they can get into drugs they, to go into the deeper dimensions. Very determined once goal is set in life. This is important for these people to have a set goal. And then they will go after it. There is a warrior energy. Secretively desirous of leadership and domination. Because Mars is there, yet it wants to go deep introvert. So they are secretly desirous of leadership, although they will not show it externally. Through defeat of enemies. Again, 8th and 1st. Right? So that's there. And then they are very highly intuitive. They have access to deep subconscious mind, subconscious heart, which is natural to them being in the ascendant. It's very natural. Psychic, intuitive ability comes extremely natural to them without doing any effort. They are very private, introverted people. They need their own space most times, going deep into every subject internally. They don't externalize, everything is inside. They are magnetically attractive, they have a mysterious look and have lots of ups and downs in life. Why the lots of ups and downs in life? Because the 8th house is a house of constant changes, ups and downs. Jupiter in Sag has come to the second house, which is stands for family, wealth, elder siblings. So they are, these scorpions have very wise, educated family, lots of philosophical, traditional approach. Sag is of tradition. In Jupiter's in Sag, it's very, very traditional. Maybe it's staunchly religious family background. In family upbringing, travel within the family frequently. They travel a lot as a family, moving from house to house maybe. Wealthy family will have luck through wealth. Jupiter expands that wealth in second. They may have an elder one or behave like an elder sibling, the child in the family. Even if they're a younger one, they may behave like an elder one. Jupiter is the elder one. Third house is of Saturn in Capricorn, the sign of Capricorn but ruled by Saturn. So okay, so younger siblings, they third house being the the house of communication, skills, friends, speech, younger siblings, conversation is always controlled. Saturn limits everything. Controlled conversation, structured conversation, Saturn. Speech is sparse, they speak very less, even the younger siblings and friends. Very coarse, dry, pessimistic conversations. Again, this is the pro property brought about by Saturn in Cap. They need effort in developing communication skills. Third house, Saturn Capricorn. So their speech will be very less, very coarse. First of all, they are very dry in their speech. It's not much of emotion in the speech. Fourth house, when you come to Saturn in Aquarius, slightly unorthodox with home and mother. Home and lifestyle will be very disciplined, very structured, think Saturn, very routine. Saturnian mother, unconventional mom, mom that kind of has different kind of belief systems. Half of this and half of that, tradition of structured home. Sorry, unconventional mom that carries on tradition of a structured home. But unconventional, so this is the thing of Saturn in Aquarius. At one side it is very structured, disciplined, restrictive. On the other side it is very unconventional and unorthodox. Wanting new ideas out of the box kind of mother. Family may have property, home detached from the family. So because there is Aquarius and Rahu is sitting there. So they are accepting of children the way they are. Aquarius is very unorthodox and very accepting. Fifth house of education, romance, love and children has Pisces. 
Jupiter will be Jupiter energy, but in Pisces, which is open minded. So these people are actually, this is incorrect, they should be non traditional, very dreamy approach to children, education and romance. They may be philosophical children, good education, they could be creative children and they would have creative approach towards the education itself. So they might encourage kids to be very, very following their dreams kind of thing. If positive, they can even study a lot, even up to PhD. As they love uncovering knowledge, you know, this is where Scorpion comes in. They love uncovering knowledge, secret hidden stuff. So it supports, Jupiter in Pisces supports higher education a lot for the Scorpion ascendants. Their love is dreamy, imagination, everything is in romance and, uh, and sense of romantic love is very dreamy and imaginative for them. Yet, when they actually get involved, they bring Martian aggressiveness in real life that contradicts that quality. As in, as soon as they get a partner, they'll be aggressive towards the partner. But their idea in their heads is dreamy because of this. Sixth house of enemies' daily work has Mars and Aries. So they have a drive to conquer the enemies. This is what makes the warrior energy. Mars in the ascendant, which is introverted, bringing Mars to the sixth house. So friends can be inimical, as in fiercely warrior kind. Ability to, but they have the ability to conquer all enemies and secretly plan against all enemies. Why? Because this eighth house is in the first, eighth sign is in the first house. Especially with family and loved ones. Now this is where it gets really crazy for the Scorpion ascendants because they are bringing the energy of warrior into home. Wanting challenges at work all the time and thriving on challenging environment. Now these people need challenges to thrive because the Mars wants the decoration. Seventh house of spouse and marriage is Venus in Taurus. Now Taurus is a fixed sign, Venus being a tender sign and materialistic. So they will have a very beautiful and handsome spouse, soft, gentle. Gentle and sensual spouse, but who has their own fixed opinions, fixed wants, in material gains, they are allowed to challenge and contract with it. Oppositional behavior with spouse, yet very protective of spouse because scorpions are protective. Emotionally involved with spouse in intensity. Intensity is everything that governs the scorpion and turns ascendant because it goes deep. Spouse may be a spendthrift, why Taurus, Venus, well dressed, conscious of holding money and finances. Taurus wants the money to itself. Eighth house of occult hidden knowledge in laws, the life of a marriage, the intimacy of a marriage has Mercury and Gemini. They can have many quick ups and downs in wealth. They have a very communicative relationship with spouse because Mercury is there. They can have ever changing dynamic relationship with in laws because Gemini is there, fluctuating, dual. And with spouse also through life. Quick short travels. Gemini is for short travels, Mercury loves short travels. They are very impulsively taking quick impulsive decisions in life. Again, Mercury and Gemini coming here. Wanting others to talk and prefer to listen and speak less. A lot of internal dialogue. The dialogue is there because Gemini is there, but it's internal, being in Scorpio. So the moon in Cancer comes in the higher knowledge. So they have very lot of emotional attachment and involvement with religion, faith, higher education. They undertake travels as pilgrims. They love to go on pilgrimage later in life. They have a waxing and waning faith in religion or God. They are fickle about higher wisdom. One day they might be religious, next day they might be atheist. Why? There's moon here. Yeah. Moon waxes and wanes in this house. Tenth house is of Leo and Sun. So in career work and achieving success, so they secretly desire want fame at work. Fame is what they are seeking, recognition and fame. Secretly desiring popularity, fame and being the boss. Secretly. Why secretly? All the scorpion traits are coming in here. Secretly seeking authority and autonomy at work. Good for government, military and medical careers. The researchers, they make excellent researchers because they are not digging deep into any aspect. That's why they can go to good even higher education. We saw Jupiter was in Pisces. So higher education is supported, 
digging deep into research is supported, so they can do well in all these careers, even in science, in forensics, even as astrologers or reporters. In yellow journalism, wherever going in debt is involved is good career for them. Of course, they are seeking recognition, you should remember this. So, 11th house of gain social networks, they have Virgo in that, so they become calculative about it. Who should I have friends? Why should I have this friend and not the other friend? The other friend gives me stuff, but I don't gain anything from it. So they are looking for emotional gains. They are looking for some kind of gains. Emotional, mental, anything which is gaining for them. Not necessarily in terms of money, but it may be in terms of value. What they value. Secretly needing gains of purpose and participation with friends or social networks. Secretly shifting loyalties. Everything about Scorpio is a secretive. Suddenly they might stop talking to one friend and say, I don't connect with them anymore. So they secretly shift loyalties, seeking only gains through social networks. They need to have something in return. Twelfth house has Venus in Libra in house of spirituality. So they can be very broad-minded in spiritual terms, very liberal views of spirituality, accepting of all faiths. They're very sensual as well. This Libra, Venus in Libra makes them open-minded about spiritual matters, about sensual matters, intimacy in sexual life, everything. Depending on the planets, of course, spirituality is a dream world for them. Idealistic and pleasant, yet highly sensual in intimate affairs. If exalted, Venus and Jupiter, they can become great occult masters and psychics. If they go into depth, depth is where it's at for them. No interest in superficiality. We cannot interest a scorpion in superficiality. You have to go deep with them. So that's it from me, my friends. You can contact me if you want to know where your planets are placed in this diamond chart and we can analyze further what you present. Nasha is where you're going in life as a scorpion. Take care. Bye-bye.